All right, ladies and gentlemen, let's recap what's been taking place over the course of the last couple of days. The president of the United States has threatened to use the United States military to quell protests. He's going to pit the U.S. military against U.S. citizens. Let me remind you, the U.S. military is actually supposed to protect United States citizens, but now they're being used potentially, if Trump actually follows through with this, to stifle freedom of speech, to stop protests in America, possibly use violence against U.S. citizens. So now, more than ever, we need uh, an opposition party. But where are they? Not really anywhere to be found. Uh, unless you look to Twitter, then they're putting out really flowery tweets. Um, if you look to Democratic Party leadership, they are writing strongly worded letters to Donald Trump. But we don't have a real opposition party. We don't actually have a check on Donald Trump's authority as he consolidates the power of the executive branch. Do you remember when President Obama was in office? He also expanded the power of the executive, but Republicans were on him like that. It doesn't matter what he did. He was signing executive orders, and they were on him every single time, crying dictator and whatnot. But where are Democrats? When we really need them to be a check on Trump's power and tyranny, quite frankly, I mean, they're basically MIA. And if they're there, they're very ineffectual. Let's look at some of the tweets put out. Pete Buttigieg tweeted this. Black lives depend on whether America can be what we want to believe it is, what we believe it to be, what it could be. Systemic racism is so woven into the fabric of this country, facing it will take action honesty, listening, and deep, deep change. And for many of us, humility. Now I say this because this is an individual who's supposed to be a rising star in the Democratic Party. He almost became president. I mean, he was one of the front runners. And he's saying black lives depend on whether America can be what we want to believe it is. What does that even mean? What does that even mean? That means nothing. Shut up, you vapid tool. Let's go to leadership here. Uh, Chuck Schumer tweeted out, At this challenging time, our nation needs real leadership. President Trump's continued fanning of the flames of discord, bigotry, and violence is cowardly, weak, and dangerous. Here's my statement with Speaker Pelosi, and it reads, Across our country, Americans are protesting for an end to the pattern of racial injustice and brutality we saw most recently in the murder of George Floyd. Yet, at a time when our country cries out for unification, this president is ripping it apart, tear-gassing peaceful protesters without provocation just so that the president could pose for photos outside a church dishonors every value that faith teaches us. We call upon the president, law enforcement, and all entrusted with responsibility to respect the dignity, and the rights of Americans. Together, we must insist on the truth that America must do much more to live up to its promise, the promise of liberty and justice for all, which so many have sacrificed. Oh, okay, I'm just going to stop reading this because it's just going to piss me off more. I mean, you're literally using platitudes. You're lawmakers. You are the two leaders of the Democratic Party in Congress. Take some fucking action. Write some legislation. Don't tweet. Make laws. Make some fucking laws. What are you doing? What are you doing? We call on everyone to live up to the values of America. It's insufferable. It's insufferable. This is exhausting. Now, at first, Joe Biden uh, decided to respond by saying, as president, I promise to have this conversation between black Americans and leaders and yada, yada, yada. I'm paraphrasing, but like what he said was basically to continue the conversation. We're past the point of conversation, Joe. We're past that point. Now we want action, and we don't want to wait until November or January. Action right now. You're the Democratic Party's presumptive nominee. Call on Chuck Schumer and Nancy Pelosi to draft very specific legislation that you will sign into law if you get elected. Beat Trump over the head with that. Use this opportunity to prove to people that you are listening, and you're meeting with community leaders, and you're actually going to stop state-sanctioned murder against unarmed black Americans. Why can't you do that? Why can't you just be competent? Well, because he doesn't know how to be competent. Now, this video is floating around on the internet where he talks about how a potential solution would be to retrain police officers so that way, rather than shooting people in the chest, they just shoot people in the legs. I wish I was making this up, but this is what he said. And the idea that instead of standing there and teaching a cop who's an unarmed person to be coming at him with a knife or something to shoot him in the leg instead of in the heart. 
is a very different thing. There's a lot of different things that can change. And talking to an awful lot of police, the former police mission of Ramsey, you know, uh, we had, uh, there, there, there's a lot that can be done. A lot that can be done. And I don't think we should underestimate or overestimate the impact of the culture. Joe, how about we just train them to not shoot people at all? Is there any possibility where we have a police force that doesn't constantly violate the civil rights and civil liberties of Americans and murder them with impunity? Why does it have to be some form of brutality? And part of the reason why I'm assuming they don't shoot people in the legs more frequently, even though that would be, you know, uh, less likely to be lethal is because then you end up missing if you try to aim for their legs and you could shoot someone else. Why don't we just not shoot people. Can we, can we do that? I mean, what are we doing? Now, to his credit, I will say that he did promise to do fundamental change and systemic racism or take on systemic racism is what he's saying within the first 100 days. That's great, but we need very, very specific policy proposals like these vague generalities, these platitudes that we're seeing from leaders within the Democratic Party. That ineffectualness, that lack of leadership there, that fecklessness that we're seeing is exactly why Donald Trump is able to be so authoritarian because you let him get away with it. He's not worried at all about being held accountable. He's not worried that, you know, this is setting up some sort of battle between him and the Democratic Party. He does anything he wants and he doesn't care. So at a time when he's literally threatening to deploy the United States military to possibly violently confront U.S. protesters, U.S. citizens, this is when we need an opposition party more so than ever. But what we've seen thus far, it's laughable. This is why the country is in the state that it's in. And I saw a meme on Twitter that I have to share. Basically, the Republican Party is Derek Chauvin, and the Democratic Party is the cop that was just watching Derek Chauvin murder George Floyd. That's what we're seeing here. They're watching. They're watching idly by as we lose civil rights and civil liberties as, you know, this continues to happen. And it's because they don't necessarily feel as outraged as we all feel, right? You see some members of Congress show up with the photo op and, you know, uh, Representative Beatty, she actually was pepper sprayed, so she was there. But I mean, you see Chris Coons opt for a photo op, Kamala Harris, who put a lot of black and brown people in jail when she was California's att attorney general, show up for a photo op. I'm just sick of it. Like, all of these words are meaningless. We're past the point where we have beautiful words that make us feel better. Now we want action. That's what everyone is saying. Action, action, action. So stop talking and start making it happen. Action. And I get that you don't have the Senate, you don't have the White House yet, but you still have one whole branch of the United States government, the House of Representatives. So start taking action. You know, you, you, you know, you know the, you know the thing, thing. You're getting nervous, man, man.